Hi everybody, Mark here from Pond Algae Solutions and in this video tip uh, I wanted to talk a little more about algicides. Um, there's a lot of different quote-unquote algicide products which are designed to kill algae directly on the marketplace uh, out there and in this video I wanted to take a few minutes and tell you uh, a little more about them, uh, how they're different and how they're uh, uh, useful in various ways and so forth. So let's get right into it and we'll cover a, a few things here on algicides. Right off the bat I want to tell you, uh, and I need to be clear on this, most of you who have watched a lot of our videos or have been to our, our website know clearly that we do not recommend algicides as a frontline treatment. They're not our preferred methodology uh, to deal with the algae problem for a lot of reasons. One, they're treating um, the algae is a symptom. It's a symptom of high nutrient loads or an imbalance in the pond and so we prefer to work on those issues first to try to correct things. Uh, some sensible issues. If your fish are overloaded in a small pond you need to probably reduce them to clear things up. Uh, large waters um, may have issues that can't be remedied directly like nutrients from runoff and stuff but you can still try to neutralize them or bring them into line through various ways so algicides are not necessarily the best way to go but there are conditions and situations that do warrant using them. Uh, it, some ponds don't respond well to uh, other means of control and so algicides definitely have a part to play but whenever you're dealing with a chemical application you should always use great care not for just for yourself in terms of handling them but also in applying them so as to not do more damage or cause more damage uh, than what you're trying to resolve so uh, at any rate in this video we're going to sort these various types of algicides out and give you an idea of how to use them more effectively and safely the long-standing mainline algicides that have been out there on the marketplace primarily for large ponds but they were also made available for small ponds too some contain copper uh, brands labels designations might include copper sulfate uh, cutrine or cutrine plus these are very commonly used mostly in large waters in smaller ponds backyard ponds you'll find a variety of different brands and it should clearly say on the label whether the product contains copper or not. I do not, by the way, recommend using any kind of copper product in a small backyard fish pond. More people have lost their fish because of this uh, and other problems associated with it, I think, that um, I, I could name. So I just don't like to suggest that. Other people may have a different opinion, but I don't like to use them in small ponds at all. For our work, we never use copper sulfate. Uh, there may be some few cases where we'll recommend it, but we hardly ever use Qtrain, Qtrain Plus. It's just not something we need. EarthTech is our preferred treatment. It's very unique. You can check that out on our website, do a search for it, and it'll come up, and it'll explain why it's different. Um, I really don't have the time in this video to do so, but it is our preferred low-dose copper uh, algicide product for large ponds. Now, all of these work through the absorption of copper, uh, which in itself is toxic to algae problem that we have with most of the copper formulas is it's also toxic to bacteria. It can be used as a bacteriocyte if you find you have bad bacteria in the pond that's overgrown, but it also wipes out good bacteria too, and we don't really want that. Um, so again, copper is not our favorite tool, but it is probably the most widely used algicite on the marketplace for large ponds. One of the things we talked about <clears throat> a few weeks ago was peroxide-based algicides. Uh, some of these are listed as rock cleaners and so forth and a few of them are EPA registered as an algicide which by their definition is something that's used to kill algae and registers uh, registered uh, to make claims as such. Um, some of these brands that we've used include Algae Off, Green Clean and there's a number of others that you'll find that contain peroxide. Most of these are in a granular form but some are liquid. Uh, and we've also suggested the use of pure hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 uh, to be used on a topical uh, application. For the most part we use these for spot control. Uh, string algae only, green water, I don't treat with it for the most part. Uh, it doesn't last long enough or hold up long enough to help much there but we do use it on rocks, waterfalls, stream beds and pockets of string algae that we can target well. 
Uh, these are all contact algicides, mean, meaning they have to come in contact with the algae to kill it. They basically lightly damage the, the cell membrane of the plant, and that's how they, they ultimately kill it. When you use these correctly in, in a limited way and apply them, as we have always suggested, in various ways, you can do so without hurting much bacteria or really putting your bacterial regimen uh, back a notch. So uh, these products are something that we do endorse and use pretty regularly for ourselves. Another family of algicides <coughs> use a chem uses a chemical that actually weakens the cell membrane of the algae. The active ingredient, I'm not even going to uh, uh, read it here for you. You can read it yourself right on the screen. Uh, sound it out if you have to but <laughs> this is something that it would take the whole video for me to try to read this but um, popular brands that you'll see using this formula uh, algae fix or algae way 5.4 and there's others as well um, this type of product can work on green water algae it has more residuality than peroxide based formulas and uh, can help with um, you know green water string algae, that type of thing. Doesn't work so well on rocks and waterfalls. Uh, generally it's safe for fish uh, when applied as directed. The only caution is you don't want to use it if you have snails or other crustaceans. It's, it's going to hurt them and so that's clearly labeled on the bottle as well. So only precautionary statement I would make about these. They can be useful in the right situations. So before we close out I have to cover precautions again precautions would include the handling and applying based on the label directions you must follow those and because we're dealing with the chemical and some of these chemicals are used on both large and small ponds you may need to check with applicable state and federal regulations there are some states that may not allow the use of such things or um, if you do use one it would have to be applied by a licensed uh, contract or somebody like that uh, a big issue these days. We don't suggest applying any kind of algicide during really hot weather or on a large or extensive or a dense algae bloom, particularly without any aeration in place. The fact is is that whenever you kill plant growth off in any form, green water, string algae, whatever, algicides are designed to kill this stuff directly and if they kill it off quickly it will inevitably pull oxygen from the water as the plant dies and if this occurs during hot weather when uh, dissolved oxygen is already low or being hard to retain in a pond due to the temperatures. Uh, you could deplete that water of oxygen and kill all the fish. And a lot of times when people lose fish from an application of some type of a chemical like this, it's not so much the product that did it, but the process. And so you got to be careful when you're trying to treat this stuff um, in hot weather or in uh, tough conditions or if the algae is really widespread to start with. So from our perspective, ideally, we always look for other ways to manage the problem. We will work with uh, stacking the deck using natural solutions against algae. And there's more information on our blog uh, at pondalgesolutions.org that talks a lot about stacking and using natural remedies and tools and things that uh, will help on all kinds of algae. Um, rather than having to resort to chemicals. But there are cases and times when an algicide may need to be used or may be useful to use. And hopefully the information in this video will help you uh, do that wisely. And uh, if you have any other questions about algicides or anything regarding your pond, please contact us at pondalgesolutions.com and we'll try to help. Thanks much.